आई एस टी वी प्रेजेंट्स इन एसोसिएशन विद धनमंजूरी कम्युनिटी कॉलेज दी एम यूनिवर्सिटी इम्फा लॉन्सिंग सीरीज ऑफ एजुकेशनल प्रोग्राम रिकॉर्डेड ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स बाय टीचर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस कॉलेज एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज ड्यूरिंग दिस कोविड नाइन्टीन लॉकडाउन एवरी डे ऑन आई एस टी वी नॉन इन एट पी एम From 24th May 2020 onwards, what's for that? Only on IHTV Nongin. Welcome back. Today I am going to give a lecture on this topic, introduction to fine structure. This is related to basic physics. For students who are studying in fourth semester, the outline of my project today's lectures will be first. I will give you an introduction on what fine structure is. I will also tell you what are its historical discovery, and after that, I'll next a brief review on this atomic model, like your Bohr atom model, followed by modification with so Bohr homomorphic model, atomic model. Then after that, in next part, I'll just go for quantum mechanics. some review on this quantum mechanics what are its potential in explaining this phenomenon on fine structure in the last i'll go to the discussion part with some examples so let's start so you see there is a source so in this source we are considering there is a gaseous atoms this gaseous atoms emit light so the emitted light is allowed to pass through a split which i have not shown in here So the light that passes after to the stage is this one, which I have represented by blue line. Now this light is allowed to fall on a prism or a diffraction grating, and after that, what you will see is that you will see lines, spectra like this, on a film, photographic film, or using a telescope. You can see this one, and this was what was seen in earlier days. that was before 1887 they were using those instrument low precision device instrument and they could see single lines like this now in 1887 this michelson and morley observed the same structure but they were using a higher precision instrument or device and what they see is that the original single line that was seen using the low precision device were found to be actually consist of a group of small lines and that was called fine structure so that was in the year 1887 and that was a big discovery so in order to understand this we have to go for some models so we'll start with this bohr atomic model before this bohr atomic model i'll just give in a uh, reference balmer in 1885 Balmer disco, uh, discovered the equation that we is known by his name, Balmer's equation, and that equation could exactly fit those wavelengths of the spectra in the visible region of an hydrogen atom, and those spectra are nowadays called Balmer series. Now, after this, which I have not uh, shown it in this slide, but uh, in uh this one uh this one uh, the rybuck yeah this rybuck new uh, met for a study and he could generalize the equation that was met by balmer to fit all those series anyway now i uh, this is the line where, where i've just said about what fine structure is so again i'm repeating it uh, this definition fine structures the term we use this fine structure is that in the original or earlier device what was seen was a single line and that single line now appears to be consists of a group of two or more lines and that is your fine structure that's why we call it fine structure so up to now we have known that uh, this was equation was just a uh, fitting an equation with an empirical equation that has no theoretical basis of the model so bohr first proposed his bohr atomic model in the year 1913 according to his model 
he could exactly predict what the wavelength or frequency of that emitted spectrum. And in one sense, it was quite good that it can explain theoretically the emission of those line spectra. But it has its own, its own defects or what you say, limits. So we'll just say it. Now, one thing is that Bohr atomic model failed to explain the complex line spectra Things for the atoms which consists of many electrons, more than two electrons. So for atoms having more than one. So in those cases, Bohr atomic model failed to explain it. That is the meaning of this part. Bohr's theory failed to explain the complex spectral lines of many electron system. So Bohr's atomic model can be applied to only to single electron system, which we call it hydrogenic atom. And another uh, failure is that it cannot explain the fine structure of the spe spectral lines. Why those fine structure of the spectral lines are seen? That cannot be answered by Bohr's theory. So later uh, in 1916, Sommerfeld modified Bohr's atomic model by including this, uh, assuming this, uh, the electron orbit is an elliptical one. And to this, he also made another additional part, that is the electrons that move is, uh, is very fast. And so we should add relativistic correction for the mass. So with this correction, he could make some improvement for uh, over this pores that we And the improvement is that mainly his improvement was in explaining qualitatively the fine structure, the origin of the fine structure. Of, OK. But uh, when you consider uh, regarding the pre uh, prediction of this uh, wavelength or frequency and so on, it was not so good as that of Bohr's. So we'll see this with an example. You are look here. This uh, the green one that I've given. Uh, this is the observed wavelength of the Lyman alpha line. That is experimental observed. That is 121.56701 nanometer. Nowadays you have to note that. We have uh, used this uh, measuring wavelength in nanometer, not angstrom, because this is the convention for uh, that we are in this modern physics part. So we are, that all unit angstrom has become obsolete. So anyway, this blue one, 121.5684, is the predicted value given by Bohr atomic model. So Bohr atomic model predicts the value to be, it should be 121.5684. And while bohr sommerfeld model predicts it to be 121.5663 nanometer. So when you compare it, you will see that the experimental value and that theoretical prediction, you'll find in both cases, they differ. So that is why we said that bohr it's not so much accurate uh, in predicting this value. So next part, we'll see that the interesting thing about this bohr sommerfeld model is that it could qualitatively explain the fine structure of hydrogen alpha line, ice alpha line. That is the Balmer first series, which we call it by ice alpha line. The another thing is that this bohr sommerfeld model failed to explain the fine structure splitting of Lyman alpha. You see that according to bohr sommerfeld model, the Lyman alpha line cannot undergo for fine splitting. But it experimentally, it was observed. So this cannot be explained. That's why I say that bohr sommerfeld model gives only a qualitative explanation. So we'll see this one. Now we'll come to this more interesting part, that is the quantum mechanics. You see that first I'll tell you what quantum mechanics is, because you, for four semester st students, you are not yet s equipped with these uh, tools of this quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics especially deals with the most motion or dynamics of microscopic particles very small particles, just like electron, atoms, and so on. So this quantum me mechanics by, uh, was developed around the year 1925. And what happened is that all those classical equation of motion were replaced by a similar equation involving matrices. In 1926, Schrodinger showed that his formalism of wave mechanics was mathematically equivalent to quantum mechanics. Uh, note that quantum mechanics is also known as Heisenberg's mechanics. But nowadays, this term quantum mechanics is more popular. All those predictions, interesting thing about this quantum, quantum mechanics is that all those predictions of quantum mechanics has always been true. And it has never failed. That is more interesting. 
So that's why more and more people started accepting this quantum mechanics. So in order to understand this fine structure, we'll be using some of the results of this calculations made by quantum mechanics. You have to recall that in earlier, Bohr atomic model was modified by Sommerfeld and that could improve the prediction that or once uh, in the sense that uh, it could qualitatively explain fine structure. Then in some sense, it is true, though not perfect. So we'll borrow this idea and we attempt to correction for this Bohr's atomic model by putting some correction. Okay, that means we know that uh, Bohr's model is somehow it's true. So those corrections will be made and those for those correction part, we'll be using those quantum mechanics results or calculations. So for understanding this fine structure, we'll first consider hydrogenic atoms, that means atoms which have only one electron. Like your first example is hydrogen, and second you can take lithium ions, one electron removed. Okay. So anyway, sorry, I mean, I repeat the part. It should be hydro, uh, helium with one electron removed and lithium double plus. Anyway, so hydrogenic atoms means those atoms which contain only one electron. So this is the part. Now, we have to talk in terms of Hamiltonian. You see this, for this part, we have to understand that the, first I'll tell you what Hamiltonian is. Hamilton, we define a quantity called Hamiltonian, which is given by the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy, and that we call it Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian of this system of this hydrogenic system should be of this form, ice is equal to ice naught plus ice one. Where this ice naught is given by the sum of P squared by two ice m plus V times R, which I've shown in red mark. The first term is this one, P squared by two ice m is your kinetic energy term. And this is the non-relativistic kinetic energy. And the second part, Br, is the classical, I mean, sorry, uh, this is the Potential energy, but we say potential, potential. So that you have to take care. Actually, it means potential energy, but we have started using this symbol V and we say potential only, but it means potential energy. Okay, that is our convention. So this is the classical Hamiltonian and with the symbol P for momentum and M for mass. Now, the second part, H1, is the first order correction. So let's see what this first order correction is. So this correction, S1, is composed of this some of these three terms, S kinetic, S ke, S so, S Darwin. So let's see what these things are. So S ke is equal to minus p by uh, p to the power four at m cube c square, and this represents the relativistic correction to kinetic energy part. Explanation I'll go in the second slide. Okay, so method this how this derivation comes that I'll not do it. Okay, we can do it in a later class. And this second part, this ISO is the spin orbit interaction energy, or which I said in your last class. And this is the expression which I made it in your class uh, last class. And this spin orbit interaction term will contribute only when. L is non-zero, means L can be one or two or three like that, but L cannot be zero. When L is zero, this term will be zero. And the last part, this ice Darwin term is given by the expression ice cut square I m square c square Laplacian of this potential, and it's called Darwin term. And this term will have a contribution only when L is zero. You got it. So if L is not zero, this term will not be present. That's thing. Now we'll see this physical understanding. Now the first part I have just said that you see this electrons revolve around this nucleus and its speed is very fast. So since this speed is very fast, we have to use the relativistic correction. Then to the earlier equation for the kinetic energy part, we should add another part for the relativistic kinetic energy part. That is the first correction. In the second part, that is what I have written here in this first. And the second part is the spin orbit interaction, which I have said in, uh, which I have talked in your last class. And uh, you can also, uh, we also call it spin orbit coupling. So let me again repeat for this uh, spin orbit interaction. You see that 
in our laboratory frame of reference, the electrons revolve around this nucleus. Got it? Now, from the electron itself, what, suppose that means you are uh, an observer is sitting at rest in electron drift. And what he sees is that the nucleus revolves in an opposite direction towards it. That means the positive charge nucleus is revolving around the electron and this is equivalent to a current and an electric current produces a magnetic field. The magnetic field produced at the side of this or at the position of the electron will interact with the spin magnetic moment and that contributes to the spin orbit interaction. That is the meaning. Okay. Now we'll go for the uh, last one. That is Darwin term. It's very, uh, no, no, I will say, a uh, little bit difficult to understand it, but you can do it so. So I'll just go this. So this Darwin term is due to Jitterbewegung, a German word. That means trembling kind of motion. You see here, we borrow one thing. An electron cannot be localized in, at a point. So in this figure, I've shown that black dot, that is an electron, which we have considered it to be an, just a point size particle. For the point size particle, what will be the potential? And that potential expression was earlier used. But now we have to make a correction that it cannot be localized to a point. So electrons is, or do some kind of traveling motion like that. And that is the meaning of this jitter big wagon. Now, because of this, the charges of the electrons should be spared out. We call it smear out. So the charges being smeared out, this term S M E A R E D. So it's smear out. It is just like this. I'm making this, just look it here. So the electron charge is being smeared out. So for this smear out means the potential energy expression should be the average one, not the one that we earlier used when uh, we have, where we have considered the point charge, uh, the part, uh, charges to be point charges. But actually, this should extend to some region. So we have to make an average. So after making the average calculation, there should be one contribution part to the potential. That is the meaning. OK. So let's see. So up to now, we are using the results of those quantum mechanics in explaining the, uh, these things. And this is actually a semi-classical level. We are borrowing both for the uh, explanation using this classical idea. So this is a semi-classical approach, OK? So anyway, you see this, those correction terms. Their correction terms is had the order of this b squared by c squared. It's called alpha squared, where alpha is a fine structure constant given by alpha is called 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e squared by i squared c. And its value is about approximately 1 by 137. So all these three terms, correction terms, are of the same order for a hydrogen atom. So we, sh we have to note this fact. OK. So this first, so after making this first order correction, we get at the total correction, which I call it EFS. This is for fine structure correction. And this is given by the relativistic correction part plus correction due to the spin orbit only when L is not equal to 0. Because in this case, when L is not equal to 0, the real term does not present. And or either we have to say for L is equal to 0, we'll get this expression, relativistic correction plus Darwin term. Or in another interesting thing is that when one goes solve mathematically producing the limit, the two values are same when the limit tends to 0. And that is a mathematical exercise which you can try it if you are interested. Now, because of this correction, an initial energy level, when that correction is met, it's split up into a number of levels, levels. and this is the we we say uh, this we have to call it multiplet splitting of the levels and because of this multiplet splitting of level we can easily understand fine structure so i'll just uh, under, uh, try to explain it by taking a simplest example for the hydrogen alpha line so this fine structure occurs in this hydrogen alpha line so how is it let us see so in this red part i'll just say we are taking an energy level that is given, calculated from Bohr's theory, OK? So when relativistic correction is made, this first level goes to this one, green one, which I use a symbol. Uh, that is the standard. I'm using this symbol only. So one, uh, the one stands for that one first one that stands for the principal quantum number, 2s half. That 
this is the thing, this is mainly due to your two things, your SK and Darwin correction, okay. Now, this is second level, as given by Bohr's theory. So when that's fine structure, um, when that fine structure correction, these three correction terms are included, we get these lines. And please note that these two lines, S half and 2P half, they are in the same level. So actually they are degenerate. They are in this, you cannot say, say, say this separately, okay. So you have to note that thing. But while drawing this diagram, we go in this way. This is, the, this is this diagram is known as energy level level scheme. Okay, so these are the splitted lines. Now, what happens is that when an electron jumps from n is equal to two to n is equal to one, we get a line that was earlier known as Lyman alpha line. Now, when the relativistic correction is made, only we see two lines. So this is the explanation for the doublet splitting of this Lyman alpha line. Now, why it jump is that? Uh, actually, it should follow. We know that uh, selection rules should be obeyed. That's why there is no electro jumping from 2s half to 1s half because change in that orbital quantum number cannot be zero. It can be either plus one or minus one. That's why only we see this two line, and this explains the fine structure splitting of this hydrogen alpha line. Note some important things for multi electron system. The spin orbit correction terms dominates over the other remaining two. Okay. So, in most books, when fine structure is considered, they will stop only in terms of fine structure splitting under spin orbit interaction. The others will not be mentioned. So, this you have to take care. And another thing is that it depends on textbook to textbooks because they have different notations. So, while reading the uh, books, you have to take care because uh, what convention they are following it that you have to take. You see that uh, you have the tot number of states, a totality of states, which have the same orbital quantum number L and orbital quantum number uh, and spin total spin quantum number S. That those states which have same below L and S, they are called term, and usually they are denoted by this symbol 2s plus 1 s for the total spin and as a sub superscript over the left one. Okay. And as an example, I've given 3P. This stands for term symbol. And another thing is that level, you have to know it. So those, it's totality of states. It consists of a number of states where all those states have the same number of capital L, capital S, and capital Z. Then it is called level, and which we denote it by this symbol, the lower one, 2S plus 1, L, J, and an example, I've given 3P1. So this notation you have to take care and you have to understand it for books. And sometimes you may find one water and another water using slightly different symbols. But what I've given here is the standard one that is used in modern physics. So deal with this. I end my lectures. Thank you. ISTV presents in association with Dhanamanjuri Community College, DM University, Impha, launching a series of educational programs recorded online classes for undergraduate and postgraduate students by teachers from various colleges and universities. During this COVID-19 lockdown, every day on ISTV Nongin, 8 p.m., from 24th May 2020 onwards, what's for that? Only on IHTV Nongin. <laughs>